we want to the Mark 7, Mark 24. Give me a sign of submission. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Jilka. Here. Commissioner Larson. Here. Commissioner Peck. Here. Commissioner Perney. Here. Commissioner Veneer. Here. I'd like to invite everyone to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item on today's agenda is the Citizens Open Forum. Time set aside for any citizens who would like to bring matters to the Commission's agenda that are not on the day's official agenda. Is there anyone here for that purpose? Seeing none, we will continue on. There's no awards and proclamations today or public hearings, but we will continue with the consent agenda. Item 6.1, approve the minutes of March 17, 2008. Item 6.2, resolution number 086504, authorizing an agreement with Sunflower Insurance Group <coughs> Incorporated to provide insurance broker services. Item 6.3, authorize the purchase of a grit pump for the wastewater treatment plant from JCI Industries in the amount of $22,456. Item 6.4, acceptance of a public utility easement dedication on a lot east on East Cloud Street adjacent to the Red Fox Edition. Any questions on a particular consent agenda item? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I'd move for approval of the consent agenda. Second. Motion is to approve the consent agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes 5-0. There's no development business today, so we continue with items of administration. Item 8.1, second reading ordinance number 07-10417, providing a change in zoning district classification from RS to R1 on property legally des described as lots 1 through 7, block 1, and lots 1 through 20, block 2, in the Red Fox edition. This... Uh, Motion passed on first reading previously, and I'd entertain any additional comment if there is any. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I'd move for adoption of Ordinance 0710417 on second reading. Second. Motion is to approve Ordinance 07-10417, providing for a zoning district change from RS to R1 on a particular piece of property in the Red Fox edition. Will clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Larson? Aye. Commissioner Peck? Aye. Commissioner Perney? Aye. Commissioner Veneer? Aye. Mayor Joka? Aye. That passes five to zero. Item 8.2, approval of a grant request from Thunderstruck Incorporated to fund the purchase of fabrication equipment. Mr. Gage? Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. The, uh, the parent company of Thunderstruck has been uh, in Salina uh, operating the truck lift specialist operation for the past 13 years. Uh, recently, they brought the uh, Thunderstruck line to Salina. Basically, they make uh, grill guards, bumper replacements, running boards, step bars, and headache racks for uh, trucks. Uh, they currently employ uh, eight people. What they're wanting to do is uh, add six new primary jobs uh, by the end of the year. Probably will happen much faster than that. The uh, average wage is in the right around $15 an hour, which is a little higher than the average wage in Saline County for the same type of job. They're requesting an SEDIC incentive grant of $21,000. Um, this is to help with immediate equipment needs. They're looking at immediately buying about $95,000 worth of equipment, though by the end of the year they expect to buy anywhere around uh, $350,000 worth of equipment. Um, when we equate this to the number of jobs that they're looking at adding, the six, it's about $3,500 per job, just to give you that uh, ratio. Uh, attached, you'll find the Wichita State University benefit cost analysis, and uh, we're always looking for anything above 1.0 for all the taxing entities, and certainly we're well above that. Uh, we, uh, this would be funded by the 12.5% portion of the economic development uh, allocation of the quarter cent sales tax. Uh, we do believe that uh, this does 
comply with our strategic plan, goal number three, that uh, deals with the uh, community of equality mixed use development as any healthy local industry such as Thunderstruck is good for our community. Uh, we took a look at this as we do all of these applications to uh, ensure that we believe it uh, fulfills the intent of the resolution that outlines the, the purpose or the grant and the use of the funds and uh, the, uh, the three entities that uh, staff this for you all concur that it does. Um, so as a result, the, uh, the SEDIC committee recommended approval at their March 13th meeting and uh, staff recommends alternative one to approve the request. Uh, I've got uh, quite a bit of information here. Be happy to answer any questions. We also have officials from Thunderstruck and from the uh, uh, Salina Area Chamber of Commerce who uh, may also be able to answer questions or uh, provide any additional input. Questions of staff report? Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to open it for any public comment, if there is any. Will you give us your name and address? Uh, Jason Brown uh, with Thunderstruck. Uh, uh, I just wanted to, <laughs> first of all, thank you guys for looking at this pro or proposal that they've worked with the chamber to get. So, um, is there any, I don't know if there's any questions or anything about the stuff. It's, it's a unique product and we're really growing. Uh, a lot faster than I thought it was going to. It's, uh, oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Here's a sample deal. Ours is a unique uh, design where you square tubing and move it on the diamond shape for the strength and the, and the look. Um, How long have you been in Salina, the company? Uh, we just moved Thunderstruck here, but I've been with uh, Lift Truck Specialist. I started it 13 years ago, and uh, so we employ seven employees right now, and it's growing too. So, terrific. So. How do you bend square tubing without <laughs> creating a crease? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> we got the equipment. <laughs> Some of the equipment that we got does that. So. Thank you very much. Any additional public comment? Commission action? <coughs> Mayor, I'd move for approval of the uh, grant request from Thunderstruck Incorporated to fund the purchase of fabrication equipment in the amount not to exceed $21,000. Second. Motion is to approve an SEDIC grant to Thunderstruck to fund the purchase of fabrication equipment in an amount not to exceed $21,000. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes 5 to 0. Item 8.3, resolution number 086505, amending the comprehensive fee schedule by amending the supervised probation fee. Judge Stoss. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. We're asking that you um, adopt this resolution, which would increase the supervised probation fee by $10. The reason for this request is we want to be able to do on-site random drug testing. We feel this will enhance our enforcement of pro uh, probation conditions. Everyone who's placed on probation with municipal court is subject to random testing as a condition of their probation, but due to the complications of actually carrying that out, we rarely test probationers, and this will allow us to do true random testing of those on probation. and. Um, impose the cost on those who would be subject to the testing rather than spreading the cost elsewhere. Um, we have information in the report about um, the expense that's involved. Confirmation testing we wouldn't expect to happen very often, but we think with increasing the fee to $10 it would cover both the on-site testing and the confirmation testing when that becomes necessary. Questions of the staff report? Mm. Thank you very much. You. Any public comment on the proposed fee change? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the commission. Mayor, I'd move we adopt resolution number 086505, increasing the supervised probation fee from 50 to $60. Second. Motion is to approve resolution 05-6505, amending the comprehensive fee schedule by increasing the fee for supervised probation from 50 to $60. All in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Passes five to zero. Item 8.4, resolution number 086503, authorizing an agreement with for a raw water study su supply study. Ms. Tasker. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, in a nutshell, this agreement today ties up uh, the loose ends from the 2007 uh, water action plan, and most importantly, it will provide the city a roadmap to meet uh, our water supply needs through the year uh, 2060. The raw water supply study scope of services includes nine specific tasks, which range from uh, project initiation and background, data collection, demand projections, water right and regulatory review, review of existing sources of supply, conservation plan, and which is task six, and that will uh, tie up the majority of the loose ends from the water action plan from setting trigger points for our drought emergency plan. We'll deal with uh, domestic wells and also include incentives for low flow water efficient fixtures and development of a long term water conservation plan and then uh, public education. Uh, for this project, we include uh, public involvement of water professionals, local stakeholders, and the citizens at large. Uh, currently, six meetings are planned with this uh, group of individuals. Three sessions are planned with the City Commission, which range from review of the existing sources of supply. Uh, at the time, we're doing alternative evaluations and then just prior to the final report. The agreement before you today is written in a co cost plus fixed fee format with an amount not to exceed of $239,800. The study is scheduled to be complete within one year from the notice to proceed. In uh, task five, there's an item that pertains to water rights and regulatory review by Fulston Seekin, attorneys at law, and they're available to render opinions on our water rights in the event we find that to be necessary. The scope and associated fee for this work is not in included in this agreement and will be negotiated separately between the attorneys and the city of Salina. The funding for this agreement is allocated from the 2008 Water and Wastewater Enhancements category of the Capital Improvement Program, and it was allocated $240,000. I believe that this uh, meets our conformance, conforms with the strategic plan by meeting uh, specific goals and action items such as uh, the development of a citizen's advisory committee to provide integrated uh, input for capital improvement and planning activities. Probably most importantly, uh, goal six, the city re will recognize the importance of its natural resources and make practical efforts to preserve them. And virtually this report takes all of that into account. It is a comprehensive approach to water use and conservation, including the creation of a long range raw water plan, updating of the current conser conservation practices, review and possible amendment of our existing water pricing, and most of all community education. And we do intend to include uh, water professionals, local stakeholders, and the citizens at large. Um, staff uh, recommends that uh, the City Commission approve resolution number 086503, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with HDR Engineering Incorporated to conduct a raw water supply study in the amount not to exceed of 239,800. Other options would be to deny this resolution, resolution or instruct staff to, to advise, revise the scope of services. Uh, today, Aaron Hunt with HDR Engineering Incorporated and Don Linderman with HDR are here and the three of us would try to answer any questions you might have. I didn't go into a lot of specific detail. I thought I would, I would let you ask me your specific questions as opposed to trying to guess what might be important to you. That's living dangerously. I know it is. <laughs> but there's a lot here. It's a, a large project with a, a lot of components, and uh, hopefully you had a chance to read through the scope. But if you do have specific questions, we'll be glad to answer those. This is calling for another a new uh, Citizens Advisory Board. Is that anticipated to just last the duration of this specific project, or are we talking about another permanent 
Citizens Advisory Board on water issues. Just to last the duration of this project is my current plan to get us through a, a plan for water conservation and uh, where we might head to the future. But at the duration of the uh, study, then their duties would be complete unless we found need to carry on at this point in time. Had not intended that. Okay. Is there some statutory requirement to do one of these every certain amount of time or? Uh, a raw water supply study? Yeah. Or not that I'm aware of. Uh, okay. It's just the point that we have done several of them over the past few years in technology, and there's several changes in water rights and water supplies that just make it necessary to take a fresh look at it to make sure we're heading in the right direction. Good. Go ahead. I was just going to ask under uh, Task 5, you talk about uh, legal counsel to uh, render opinions on our water rights. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate? us having to do that or because of all the issues in the past couple of years are we pretty square on that we do uh, commissioner we there are many legal aspects to all of this and uh, as it relates to the roles of various other uh, governmental units and water rights and so forth so we do anticipate some not sure until we get into it to what degree we would really look at that and obviously we will start with our general counsel with Greg but uh, certainly we think there will be a need for some specialized uh, legal consultation in all this Okay. Um, talk about reviewing the rate structure. And uh, I know we have, I believe, a contract with Wilson and Company on that. Is that correct? And we do, uh, under the background on the first page, we do have a draft report from Wilson and Company, and that's currently under staff review. Okay. And. Uh, we will take a, a cursory review from HDR's knowledge of all of the different communities they've worked at to make sure what we've done is proper. Take another look at that, a cursory review. And when we look at this 12 months from now, we'll see Wilson and Studies report also. For the uh, rate changes, the rate changes. It's my intention, and Jason can agree or disagree, that we'll be bringing that to you in the very near future. Yeah, I think what what, what Wilson currently recommends for the next five years, as far as our overall rates, and then we'll be taking a look at the water conservation rates. Very near future would be two months. Uh, yeah, I'd probably sooner than that if we can. The, what we're weighing is, is in the last year we looked at restriction. Uh, base control over the water usage, which is fine, and, and it, the intention of that was to shave the peaks off, and uh, we think it did that. It didn't bring the overall use down all that much. It did a little bit, but uh, not much. And so what we're looking at is a tool that many communities in Kansas, Kansas has put together, which is a, a conservation-based pricing tool. Uh, and we're, it's, it's the, the simplified version is, is you may compare against a certain number of low-use months, and then if you exceed that by at any or over a certain percentage and you get into a different uh, rating schedule and uh, it's intended to use pricing to reduce usage overall so that's really what we're looking at and Martha and I will get together on that our intention is to be able to provide some notification obviously on that for those who would uh, you know irrigate and so forth and we're getting about to the time although April should be a pretty good month towards the end of May you start to see more irrigation certainly in June it uh, gets up so our hope is to get that in front of you as quickly as we can take a final look at it make sure we're comfortable with the logic there and the uh, the rate structure and get in front of you for action okay. and how far in depth will they go into as far as doing something with the wastewater treatment plant reusing the uh, the water as far as um, the different options of different options everything from um, using it for irrigation for the local golf courses to the soccer fields any type of recreational use plus a uh, recharge of the uh, groundwater okay and that will be included in this report yes. also would I be accurate with yes, that that's yes. okay all right very good thank you kind of a follow-up to uh, Commissioner Veneer's question about uh, the uh, involvement of the attorney attorneys in this uh, I know that there's some dispute over how much water we actually have rights to in Canopolis and um, I think you attended some meetings last <coughs> year um, was in Lindsberg about about that subject and who who is the ultimate arbiter of that kind of if, if we got in a position where we needed that water who is the ultimate arbiter do we know probably the division of water resources 
or actual water in Canopolis Reservoir, currently we, we do not have any storage the city of Salina in Canopolis. That's one of the items we'll look at. What, what there is rights to is whatever inflow is coming into the uh, reservoir, that amount in the stream below is the, the least amount that could be considered. Currently, it's based on uh, the discharges from uh, Canopolis Lake on the Corps of Engineers uh, uh, operation manual, which ranges from 10 cubic feet to 50 cubic feet uh, during the year. Currently, um, the Smoky Hill River is in a gaining stage because the groundwater levels are up. They're discharging 15 cubic feet, and we're still seeing 115, 120 in the river. So. Um, I don't know that that answers your specific question, but to date, um, in Canopolis Reservoir, we do not have a, a contract for any portion of that water. Yeah, that's correct. That basically, there are three parties that we're, we're working with. Um, the Corps of Engineers uh, owns and manages Canopolis Reservoir, and so they determine through a manual what that discharge that Martha was referring to, what that rate is, and it does change at different seasons of the year. And then uh, once it gets into the water, you get into the Division of Water Resources realm where they deal with water rights, which you can uh, take from your wells, which you can take from the river. But at the same time, the state uh, water office has purchased storage in the reservoir, and then they assign rights to that storage, and so they become a player as well. So it's ultimately, you really have to work with all three. Once it leaves uh, the reservoir, uh, you're looking at probably working with two, and I, I think I'm going to sway towards the side that says, uh, the Division of Re Water Resources is going to need to agree with whatever happens in all that. That would be correct. My, my question was kind of answered with Commissioner Pernice. Um, on the Citizens Advisory Board, how are we going to solicit those candidates and about how many will be on that board? Currently, we'll use uh, the uh, expression for interest form and then that group would be uh, selected by the mayor and then approved by resolution through the City Commission. Currently, my intent is hopefully about 10. Okay. Uh, a reason, give or take from that size. And they would, I'm assuming, will all have interest in different fashions of this study, whether it be water conservation or raw water supply. They <laughs> may not be interested in every facet, but we're going to try to get them to be open minded through the whole course of the, the study. Okay. And yeah. it's just, Tim, I'm sorry, it's just during this this research period this 12 these 12 months that's correct that, I understand study, you correctly? that that's our intent right now unless for some reason we find value in carrying that on but at this point don't, do not see that commissioners one thing we're going to have to look at with that uh, advisory group is what amount of information will be presented that would be considered confidential and potentially closed record uh, information because there are lots of things that uh, relate to long-term water uh, it could be prop purchase a property, uh, you know, uh, someone else's rights. There could be a lot of things in which would f topically would fall under the closed session type situation. So we need to probably talk through that just a little bit more before we jump into pointing that and then get back with you and see what you want to do. And we've defined that in our scope of services that that's an issue to, to determine what's confidential so that it doesn't get released uh, unnecessarily. Yeah, two comments and a question. Uh, I, I think a comprehensive look at, at uh, water supply and use is, is money well spent. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming uh, that all of these tasks are tasks that we feel are, are justified. Uh, for instance, task one, I was hoping we could buy them barbecue and give them a list of phone numbers and save $7,400. <laughs> um, and then on, say, task number five, review uh, of existing sources of supply, is that beyond the scope of what our staff is capable of providing? I believe so, yes. Okay. It's, it's fairly detailed. We'll be looking at every one of our sources in great detail and uh, very time consuming. Okay. And that's where we possibly could get into the issue with yeah. additional we rights. It's fairly complicated. Okay. We can identify possible sources. The question is the evaluation of those, and that's part of the uh, identification. Okay. It's a deep evaluation. And then I guess my last comment was uh, after, you know, this is a chunk of money for a study, but, but obviously there's a lot, a lot of stuff, a lot of data collected and, and uh, examined here. I just, 
you know, this is a study that's going to last uh, the course of a year. I just hope that at the end of this, as time fades, we actually do something with this, that, that we have like a meat and potato plan here that we can, that we can substantiate. Uh, as it sits, you know, we, we've spent some money on studies that seem to be out there floating and uh, that we haven't done anything with, and I just hope that there's immediate uh, sort of return on this. Well, I believe there will be, and some of the previous studies uh, go back 15, 20 years ago, and a good share of those studies have been completed. Okay. The phases at the water treatment plant, uh, as far as the additional raw water supplies, some of those areas have been held off on, and again, technology changed to where we, we might have a better look at a different source of water supply. Okay. And so we think it's time to make sure we're, we're going down the right road. Sure. It's be a lot of money invested. Any additional questions? Thank you very much. I would uh, entertain any public comment, if there is any, on the proposed raw water supply study. Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the commission. Mayor, I move that uh, we approve resolution 086503, authorizing you to enter into an agreement with HDR Engineering, Inc. to conduct a raw water supply study in the amount of $239,800. Second. Motion is to approve resolution 08-6503, authorizing agreement with HDR Engineering, Inc. for a raw water supply study in an amount not to exceed $239,800. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes 5 to 0. Mm -hmm. Item 8.5, resolution number 086506, appointing members to the Comprehensive Plan Focus Group Committees. I wanted to uh, read the uh, names and uh, thank everybody who expressed interest in serving on these focus group committees. On our community and people, we have Deborah Devine, David Hawksworth, Brian Kinnaird, Nancy Klostermeyer, Lisa Petty, Doug Rimp, and Greg Stevens. On our connectivity, we have Phil Black, Kim Brown, Brad Jenkins, Ted Minton, and Nancy Reese. Under downtown, we have Trepper Bootenbach, hope I pronounced his last name right, Amy Kopp, Karen Hauser, Nancy Hodges, Carolyn Mikasil, Terry Sherman, under Economic Development, Dwayne Custer, James Hall IV, Jeff Mays, Kelly Mowbray, Rick Ryan, and Lawrence Wetter. Under Growth and Development, Chris Curtis, Kurt Cusick, Brian Hedgepetch, Sharon Kibbe, Don Mars, Michelle Real, Gary Waldron, and Barbara Young. Under Neighborhoods and Housing, Phyllis Anderson, Doris Bettinger, Kelly Dunn, Tricia Grace, Dietra Grancella. Mark Labes, Wayne Montgomery, Tom Mulhern. Under Parks and Recreation, Chris Boyer, Ruth Cathcart Rake, John Hubline, Kylie Moody, Doug Ruddick, Wayne Schneider, and Amy Warther Sweens. And under Youth, we have Tess Blackwell, Dwayne Grace, Grant Hodges, Bob Homolka, Joe McKenzie, and Hazel Pierce. So I would entertain a resolution making those appointments. Mayor, I'd move for the adoption of resolution number 086506, appointing members to the Comprehensive Plan Focus Group Committees. Second. Motion is to approve resolution 08-6506. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes 5 to 0. One quick question. Um, are we, there was some discussion when this pre-list was sent out to us in the packet that we might leave the uh, application period open for another couple weeks Mr. Sprague, to yeah, add that, to this. Are we going to do that or not? That is accurate in terms of discussion. We're still receiving some applications or expression of interest forms. And because of scheduling, uh, Gould Evans Consultants has set the meeting date a week later than we anticipated. So if the commission is so inclined, we can take applications through the 3rd of April 
process them at the city the following city commission meeting and still have enough time to get them appointed before the focus group meetings that same week I for one I'm so inclined <laughs> anybody still interest they can uh, fill out yes we we still have a number of them out and we are re receiving a few yet today okay I anticipate we may receive a few more good There's no further business I'll entertain a motion to adjourn so moved Second. Motion to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>